Well, welcome to part four, video number two. In this video, you get to see things come together. I'm going to put the rack in, populate it, add everything in, and get it up in production in my home network, including 10 gig operation and a little bit of performance testing I'm going to throw at the end of that as well. Some of it's going to be sped through. In this case, not that much of it, but some of it will be. Hopefully, you get something out of this video and you find it useful in some way. And if you do, at least consider subscribing to my channel. Well, let's get started and putting this thing together, okay? Let's start by actually installing the rack itself into the new location that I've created. I'm going to use eight of these screws to hold it in. They're self-threading into wood, and I'll put two within each of the four areas where screws can go. Okay, it's all installed now. I think it's pretty solid with the eight screws I've added. And all the cables came through cleanly. I'm going to have to move that cable for the actual cable back up. That'll take the network down one more time. Looks good so far. Okay, it's time to install the various components and shelves and such. I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. At the very top, I need to put in a 2U shelf. That'll hold a lot of the key components, and that's the one I had to mod because it was slightly too long. But as you install this shelf, particular note is you have to make sure that that lip on the front there does not get in the way of the unit below that. So you have to level it with the top line of the top U that you plan on installing it in. To fasten it in, I'm using screws that were meant for this particular rack, although they're very common for other racks as well. Even though the shelf feels quite secure, I'm going to go ahead and put something to support it at the back end here. I'll just have to figure that out. I found these little brackets here in my junk drawer. I think they're for hanging Venetian blinds. I think they'll work out pretty well if I just sort of put them right underneath the back corner of the shelf here and lock them in place. I'll have to first go ahead and mark it off and then remove the shelf to get this job done properly, however. Okay, the shelf is off and I've now secured these little brackets on both sides, first on the right and then there on the left. And I just have to get the shelf back on and see how it looks. Okay, I have the shelf back in and I even checked to make sure that it's level and it is. That's a good job and those brackets are holding up well. Well, my plan at this point for to put the next device in, which is the 10 gig switch, my brand new component that I bought with this new rack. So I just have to install it in here and secure it down. The next thing going in is a cable manager. It uses up one U and it will help organize all the cables um, between one of the switches and one of the cable distribution panels. The way this works is the cables are tucked into these little slots in the cable manager. The excess cable is tucked back behind it out of the view. And then finally, there's a cover that goes over the front of it to cover up as much of the cable management as possible. And it looks really, really professional. Next is the first of two distribution panels. This one here is the one that came without any keystone jacks pre-installed, which is good because I'm going to put different types of keystone jacks in here depending on the purpose. Now the plan is to use all of the 10 gig switch connections through this distribution panel plus any miscellaneous connections. For example, connections that are coming from devices elsewhere in the rack that need to be distributed will come in from the back through that distribution panel and then connected to the appropriate switch. Next is my existing 1 gig managed switch. This is the main carryover network wise from my old configuration to this one. Mm -hmm. 
Now that's in place. It's one of the deeper units that I put into this particular rack. Next is the second cable manager. The first one was for primarily 10 gig. This one is going to be primarily 1 gig. This one also has a cover, but I'm going to leave it off for now since I'm very close to start connecting all of those cables. Next to go in is the second distribution panel. This one actually has a cable rest on the back of it. One of the reasons why it's more expensive than the other one. But also, this one includes all of the keystone jacks of type 6A Ethernet cables. So that saves me the trouble of having to put them all in myself since, you know, most of the ones that are going to go into this particular one are going to be 1 gig anyway. I don't need anything better than that. Plus, there's a ground wire on it that will be part of the overall system. And coming in with the cables is a ground wire that's connected to earth inside of my basement. So that's all going to make that together as one giant ground. These cables coming in through the wall, they're the ones that are primarily going to be connected to this particular distribution panel. And as you can see here, I did connect the ground behind one of the screws to the rack. I've already strung all of the cables across the top of the cable rest on the back of this particular distribution panel. I'm going to follow the numbers that are already in the cables that I've had from previous so that I match up the network the way it existed before. The last thing that's left is the power distribution panel and that unit is going to be installed backwards so it will look like a blank in the rack. Now, I plan on living it this way, but I have two other pieces that could go in here. Either a blank, a real blank, or I could put another shelf in here. So I'll have to see how it looks when I've wired everything up and determine if I need something else added. I decided to stick the server in here to make sure that it fit okay before I put anything else in, but I did decide to put the extra shelf in. Now this is a shelf that I actually got as a Christmas gift. Wasn't sure I was going to put it in, but as I thought about it, it would work very well with my Raspberry Pi and a couple of other small devices I may have that need to be in the rack. I do have to watch out because there is a lip on the front of that, so it's going to be difficult to get things in and out. The shelf is nice and solid. Let me try the Raspberry that I'm using as a backup domain controller and see how that fits. I can't fit it through the front, so I'll have to go around the back here and see if I can slip it in like that. Okay, straighten it out a little bit. And good, fits perfectly. And I have room for others or other small devices just like it that I might want to experiment with. That lip keeps things from falling out. Okay, I've gone through and hooked it up just to test it all out. All the cables are connected to the same locations, the same port numbers on my one gig switch as they were before. I'm trying to use a color coding scheme with these cables. So the white ones are meant for the Cat5 cables and I have a bunch of those. The black are meant for Cat6. The gray are meant for Cat7. Now I have none of those currently running within my walls yet, but I do have one that's strung out out of the way from my main workstation. That one's right here. So the actual cable is coming in on the side over there. Then I'm taking that and it's fed through the back and connected up to this first port right here. And then of course I have it fed over currently over to the port over here on the one gig switch. Now that's going to change. That's done with this jumper right here that's coming in and jumping that over to the correct port. What I'm missing now is I do have the server connected up to the 10 gig switch, but there's nothing else hooked up to. As a matter of fact, the fact that the server is off, it's currently showing two yellow lights. So if I powered the server on, which is no point in doing right now, you'd see this turn into the greens once the server software has come up. But what I am missing is I have no connection between this switch and this switch. So what I'm going to use is the SFS port. Now this one shares a port with port 8, the SFF port, 
This one has four SFS ports, but they only run, as I said in a previous intro, they only are running at one gig. So I need to put one gig adapters into both of these and then run a cable between them. And as you may remember, what I have is a little piece of fiber to do that with. So let's put that on next. So here's a little fiber adapters. Remember I bought them in a pair. So I have two of these. I'm gonna put one in each one of these two SF ports. And then here's a small little piece of fiber. It's only one and a half foot, half meter. I'm not gonna run it through these cable managers though because these are very delicate. So I'm gonna leave it with maybe a spin in it. We'll see. I'll try to get it so that I don't cause any damage to this as I put it. But now I first have to connect these guys up. So if I pull this first one out up at top here, it's got a little protector cap on it, which I will save. And then this here plugs into that port. It has a little protector on it too for the actual fiber connector. So I'm taking that off. And then I'm going to plug this in. We'll put this in here. We'll push it all the way in like that. We'll take the one down here and I'll pick the very last port here. Take off the little cap, the protector. Take off the little protector on the actual adapter. And I'll plug this one in. And now let's see what happens when I connect up the fiber to it. This is actually glass, very thin, bendable glass, but it is glass. That's why you don't want to stress these at all. So I got to pull off these little protectors here, these little white protectors that are protecting each of the little lenses. I have to pull those on both sides, pull those off. And now I will connect in one over here. It snaps in place. And then I will connect one down here onto the bottom, snap that in place. And now that's in. I'm going to tie wrap this and be very careful about it. I do not want to overly bend this. So this is going to be lingering out here. I'm not going to run it through the cable management hub because that's too much tension on the wire, but it actually is lighted at this point at both ends. See if I can show you that. So if I look here, this is the one that's on the 10 gig port. You see both white, both of them, they're blinking orange or yellow because it's only a one gig connection as far as this switch is concerned. And then down here, there's no lights on this one. They're way over here. The very last port is showing a connection. The fact that it has the second green indicates that it is connected at one gig. So it's the very last one over here. That's port 28 on that switch. So now let me turn on my server and see what happens here. I come down here and I turn on my server. The server is coming up. Let's see what happens when the adapter connects up on the 10 gig switch. I want to see those turn green, but it's got to wait. I just heard a beep, so it's still coming up. They went off. They're initializing the adapter. I think it goes off twice before it actually connects. We'll see. They're off again. They're on. And I see two green lights. So right now that is connected at 10 gig, my server, to this switch. And if I have this right, then when I go and look at my computer, I'll be able to get to the server. So let me switch over to that. I'll do a screen capture of that. Okay, let's see if this thing actually uh, works now. Let me uh, go to my server. There it is, it's already there. Let me log in. And we're up. Wow, that's good. I can come in here and go to different places, my interfaces, interface management. As you see, it's the, uh, the LAN is the BXE0, which is the, the 10 gig. So it looks good. Won't do any other testing on this at this point since it does seem to work, I'll, but I'll leave it connected for now. Okay, now I got three of them running. This first one is my server, my Sigma NAS server. The second one is my primary editing and general engineering workstation. And this is my backup engineering workstation. It's good to space them out like this if you can because the uh, actual drivers for them stand right next to each other on that little board. So this will actually keep them cooler by not doing them unless you have to, unless you're filling them up. But when you have the choice, space them out, especially if you have a very active one like my main workstation. You want to keep it away from others if possible. I now still have to put the fan situation together. So right now I have no fans over here on this side or on that side. So as I said before, I got the wood all created and we're gonna have double fans. These two on this side will blow in and these two on this side will blow out. I'm doing that primarily because the fan that's inside my 10 gig switch is blowing in that direction. If it doesn't work out well, I could always reverse that. The top and bottom will be controlled separately and we'll see how that works out as well. 
I could always switch that around. The network server rack is usable, and I'll move forward from here. Here are the results of a crystal disk mark performance test between my primary and secondary workstations. Remember, one is 2.5 and one is 10 gig. Here is an iPerf 3 test done between the primary and secondary workstation, checking throughput when testing each other as a disk. Keep in mind that the secondary is only 2.5 gig networking. And this is similar crystal disk mark performance testing between my primary workstation and my server. Clearly, this performs a lot better when both devices are running at 10 gig. I was unable to run iPerf between the two of these because I need to get the server version of iPerf running on FreeBSD. That'll come in my next more detailed performance testing video. So here's my new network rack running in its full glory. As you can see, everything is functional. It is in pretty much its final stage for now until I replace that server. All of the fans are now installed and running, including the digital controllers that are in the background controlling which set of fans are running. And then finally, my new 10 gig switch, which is the centerpiece of this new build. Well, with the conclusion of this second video of part four, my network is up and running. Now I've done a little bit of testing on it and included it within this last video of part four, but I'm gonna be doing some more configuration to it going forward. It'll include the server that you see there. That's gonna be replaced completely with a new rack mounted server. Also, I wanna do some advanced performance testing on it. And I'll show you both the tools and everything else that I've used for doing that. Hopefully you've gotten something out of this video and you found it useful. And if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It would be very helpful. So until the next time, take care, be safe, and please be healthy.